It is estimated that around 156 million people will vote in election 2020. But this year, the election is very different. With a global pandemic raging on, some people are reluctant to go out and join long lines to vote. So one of the biggest differences this year is that some states have been looking at alternative methods for casting ballots to make voting easier and safer. So, Brian... Two of the most talked about alternative options to voting in person, universal mail-in voting and absentee ballots. Yeah, and they often get lumped together as the same thing. But there is a difference, Jackie, and we're going to go into some of the details now of exactly what the difference is. And the other thing to say is that each state is different. Every state has its own rules. Every state is different when it comes to exactly how you're going to vote in what would be the most unusual and strangest and most postal-heavy elections ever here in the US in November. So before we go anywhere else, let's explain universal mail-in voting and absentee ballots. First up, what is universal mail-in voting? So universal mail-in voting is when the state officials send a ballot in the post to everybody who's registered as a voter in the States, regardless of whether you asked for it or not. You're going to get this ballot paper in the post. You will then get the option to send it back or to drop it off to a designated drop box. And this has already been in place in many states, states like Colorado, Hawaii, Oregon, Washington and Utah. Now, this time round, 2020, because of the pandemic and because of this drive to have fewer people showing up in person in a polling station, we see other states going down this route. California, for example, has recently announced that it will be sending out universal mail-in ballots to everybody in the state. And that's a massive population in California. 21 million registered voters all getting their ballot papers in the post. But absentee ballots, that's different. With universal mail-in voting, every registered voter is automatically sent a ballot. But with absentee ballots, you have to request that ballot before it's sent to you. That's right. You have to go to the trouble of saying to your local officials, I need this absentee ballot. Sometimes you have to give an excuse and sometimes you don't, depending on your state. Again, we spoke about this at the start. Different states, different rules. So a state maybe like Pennsylvania, you don't have to give an excuse. You can just say, I need this absentee ballot. But then there are other states, maybe like Texas, where you have to give a reason. You have to give an excuse. Maybe you're ill. Maybe you'll be out of state those weeks. Maybe you're away. Maybe there's some issue. But you have to make a reason. You have to make a case for getting this absentee ballot. But there is controversy there, too, about postal voting. Oh, constantly. Every day we hear it from Donald Trump saying that this postal ballots, the mail-in voting is corrupt, it will lead to fraud, it will lead to inaccurate results. He doesn't have any evidence of this, but he's constantly saying it. We're hearing him every day warning about the perils and the problems with postal voting. Recently in North Carolina, he told his supporters at a rally that they should vote by mail, but then also turn up on election day to the polling station and vote again, something which would be illegal. The White House had to come out afterwards and clarify that he wasn't telling anybody to break the law. What he was actually saying was, send in your postal ballot and then follow up on election day and make sure your vote was counted first time around. And if it wasn't, then you should vote again. OK, so what are the facts? Regardless of the system, you have to be a registered voter to receive a ballot through the mail. You then fill it out at home or wherever you are in the world, send it back by post or to a drop box, a ballot box. Um, but what happens then is those ballots need to be verified before they are counted. Yeah, and there are verification systems in place. We mentioned at the top that some states have been doing this for years. States like Oregon, for example, there's special barcodes on the ballot paper and on the envelope and it has to match. Other states, they'll ask you to sign it and the signature has to match. And if the signature doesn't match, they'll send it back and they'll make you sign it again. Other states ask for photocopies of your ID to be included in the envelope. So safeguards have been put in place. The states that are doing this for years insist it's fine, it's worked well for us, but we have never seen it on this scale. This is unprecedented in the US that we're going to see so many people voting by mail-in ballot, by absentee ballot and using the postal service. And Brian, cases of fraud do remain low as well. They are low. 
Donald Trump has portrayed this image of that it will happen, that you'll have someone sitting at their kitchen table filling in hundreds of ballots or that dead people will be getting ballots in the post and that it's a very corrupt system. No clear evidence of that. Some studies have been done. I saw a figure one time of it's 0.0004% of fraud or something like that. It's not a huge problem. It's certainly something, however, that Donald Trump is sowing the seeds of doubt about right now. Perhaps if things don't go his way, it will give him the ultimate excuse after Election Day to say, well, the whole system was corrupt and fraud. What do you expect? We do know, though, there is going to be an upsurge in postal voting this year, and that might have an impact on election night. A warning here that election night this year in 2020 might mark the beginning and not the end. Absolutely. The sense is that on election night, there's a good chance maybe Donald Trump will win the vote. And that is because he is constantly urging all of his supporters and Republicans to turn up on the day and vote in a traditional in-person polling station situation. So if that's the case, he could well be the winner, in theory, on paper, on election night. But then it will be in the following days and weeks that we will see all those other postal votes being counted, and that could well tip things in Joe Biden's favour, making him the winner. Analysts saying that if it's a case that Joe Biden is the winner on election night, then it's good night and good luck for Donald Trump, that he would have no way back from that, that he would need to have the win on election day. And of course, they've already dubbed it the red mirage, red for Republican. You may have this situation on election night where it looks like Donald Trump has won, but in the following days and weeks, it actually transpires that maybe it's gone another way. But it could be a long process to get a result following this election. Thanks so much, Brian. And yes, it could be a very long November.